Today I'm going to do something a little different. You know, in my day-to-day -day work, I connect with a lot of beings and spirits on the other side when they have left the body. And so in my regular sessions, people often get messages from their loved ones. But with so many deaths around us uh, recently, and especially this very highly controversial death that we've all experienced here in the United States with Jeffrey Epstein, I thought I'd do a little checking and try and connect with his spirit and with messages from my guides on to what the circumstances were real, real, not what mainstream media is reporting. There. Welcome so, to my channel. My name is Amira Hall. I am a spirit medium and a quantum energy healer. And if you're new here to my channel, I'm really glad you could join me. And if you've been following me for a while, thank you so much for all your support and all your comments and all your likes and sharing. That really means so much to me. Today, I'm going to do something a little different. You know, in my day-to-day -day work, I connect with a lot of beings and spirits on the other side when they have left the body. And so in my regular sessions, people often get messages from their loved ones. But with so many deaths around us uh, recently, and especially this very highly controversial death that we've all experienced here in the United States with Jeffrey Epstein, I thought I'd do a little checking and try and connect with his spirit and with messages from my guides on to what the circumstances were real, real, not what mainstream media is reporting. So. So being that it was such a shock for so many people, I decided to take a deeper look at this and look at the energy surrounding the circumstances and of the event and actually perhaps with his spirit and see what he was feeling. So I connected with my spirit guides in meditation and I asked them some questions about the controversies concerning this case. First I asked my spirit guides and Jeffrey Epstein's spirit three questions. The first, and then I, I pulled some of my soul wisdom cards that I are my own creation to ask for a deeper clarification on the messages. So the first question I asked was, is he dead or alive? Second question I asked was, was it suicide or a murder? And the third question was, who was responsible or who was behind his untimely death? So the very first question back to, is Jeffrey Epstein dead or alive? So when I look at the question, uh, energetically speaking, I got a symbol of a rosebud that was limp and drooping and the stem was limp. And the message I got that was he was preparing to blow in a tuba, you know, the musical instrument, boom, 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 boom. Well, he was getting ready to sound off is what the message that I received. So my sense is that he is not in his body any longer. And however, please note that his spirit is very much alive. And the message was not getting, what was happening was he was getting ready to blow his message or blow the sound through this tuba and this musical instrument. Basically, he was said that he was preparing to sound off. Second question I asked was, in fact, if he was dead, was it a murder or suicide? And Jeffrey Epstein's spirit was seemingly going through and working on and preparing a, le a new legal strategy is what I got. And he was possibly trying to cut a deal or make a deal. And as it appears though, there was money being offered through channels and it was being extended, but there were bubbles popping in the picture I saw. And so what he was trying to communicate was the old ways of their operating wasn't working anymore, but they were restructuring a plan um, and really it did not look at all that he was uh, suicidal. He was very much engaged and when I was looking at that, I was getting some tingling on the top of my head and, and the message came through that he was not going down without a fight and he would be taking others with him. So there was so much, um, I feel, protective energy that was around him, whether it's our government, whether it's other individuals. Um, and he also said that he really was loyal to somebody, but that person turned their back on him. So what he was building was a new strategy from where he was and where he was going to be going. Um, and he wasn't really, then he showed me a picture of standing in a very tall building and it seemed very austere and there was nobody around him. And he was saying that nobody's listening to him. He was looking out of a window. It seemed again, very plain. 
and all he could see was white clouds. So my sense is that he was preparing um, at certain level for his next step or his stage as a spiritual development and that he was not necessarily stuck but he was disconnecting from the body and he was not sure where he was he couldn't understand why nobody was listening to him or where he was so that was that was interesting he was basically saying um, that he didn't well he didn't really sense that he was in a prison but he wasn't really connected to the earth realm and for him the earth realm was more of a prison so where his spirit was being disconnected it was almost like he was out of that experience and he did understand that somehow his days were numbered is the communications that I got he had suspicions he didn't really have a sense of when or who or how he would be leaving this world, but he had a sense that the game, um, he did say that the game had nothing to do with drugs, which I found a little bit interesting and it wasn't related to any of my questions. The, the words he said was, although this game has nothing to do with drugs, it's all about the love for money. Um, he said this is not open and shut case and that there are many, many rabbit holes and secrets of about power and control. And I think some of us watching this kind of have that sense. He keeps looking at his watch and for some reason he's noticing that the hands on the watch are not really moving. They're moving so incrementally slow. And then, you know, I was asking, you know, like what happened? What happened? I kept repeating it. And he said that he was caught off guard and my sense were you know when I'm communicating with spirits sometimes it's not a fluid stream sometimes they get through me messages like in short snippets sometimes it's just a word sometimes it's an image or a, a, like a vignette now I'm really not a chess player but you know he's saying checkmate I feel that Jeffrey Epstein felt threatened being stuck in prison and with the, you know, his possible death. And I also felt like he had no way of removing the threat. He felt that he was stuck. And I, as I was continuing to try and communicate with him and asked him what happened, he said that he was returning to a cell um, after a visit and I'm assuming that was with an attorney and he said that someone grabbed him from behind he said that it looks as if it was planned um, or involving the guards as if there were um, there was someone else in addition to the guards so that that um, he said that the guards were not really present so I don't know if that means they left him and walked away and someone broke his neck in the hallway um, but he also said that someone was doing a favor for someone else and he said that there was a connection to the previous cellmate and he sees hands passing um, notes then he then he shows me a picture of him vomiting and gagging and choking and, and feeling very nauseous and I don't know if that was an indication he was nervous of what was going on or if he was really just trying to communicate that he was being choked um, gagged and basically that's how he ended his life of gagging and gagging um, he also said that there were some scheduled changes with the shift changes and with the guards and he, he showed me a calendar or schedule and there were names on it that were whited out you know with that liquid paper he said the names were being covered up or whited out um, so that you couldn't see who was there and responsible for it so so this these words off guard could it be a play on words you know i don't know could it be that the guards were you know as the as media reports that they were caught sleeping could it be that the guards were turning a blind eye so to speak um and then he was trying to let me know that that there was someone trying to intervene and then there were two guards but he said they were there but they weren't there so I'm not really sure how to interpret that maybe somebody maybe they stepped aside so then it was almost like my head was really tingling strong and burning it was almost like a burning energy all over my head perhaps that was the moment of death where it was almost like an explosion um, and, and there was a pressure pushing down on my head so I'm not quite sure what 
that was. But, you know, so I kept asking more and more questions like what's happening, what's happening. And he basically said that he was not going down without taking others with him. You know, I don't believe Jeffrey Epstein was much of a spiritual man based on on stories and information that we got um, before he left his body, but it doesn't really appear that he's stuck. You know, the message I got was that he's not moving. He's in a preparatory phase. Basically, he said, you know, as he's looking at his watch, it's only a matter of time, but the hands are moving so, so slowly. Now, I know in spirit that there really is no measure of time, so I'm not really sure if he's relating to what's going on here with the fallout from his death or on more investigations or what's happened uh, or what he's left behind, basically. Um, and again, keep in mind, in spirit, there is no time, so he might be relating to that. Um, I don't really know that he feels like he's out of his body. I don't know what kind of games are being played inside or inside the prisons, but he was basically scheduled. Some Whoever was scheduled to be on guard was not. There was someone different is what he was telling me. And he said that um, inside the prison that there's lots of loose reins, you know, like the horse's reins. Basically, the people on the inside are controlling the powers on the outside and that um, the wardens are really not the ones in charge. And he was saying that, um, basically he was saying that there are other persons inside the prison that were more in control and power. And uh, while I was looking at this, I just got a very, very strong feeling and that a sharp, sharp pain in my neck. And he says that the news and all the mainstream media is just fluff. <laughs> that, those were his words. And then basically with his story, with his death, there's um, underground tunnels that are leading to dark partners. He's saying that there's networks upon networks of these, of dark versus dark. So, um, and that they're hiding underground and they're hiding from prying eyes. He said that, he said that there's many, many secrets of games and protection. So basically he's standing back and outside of his body and he doesn't feel dead. You know, he said nobody, he doesn't, he doesn't understand because nobody can hear him. He doesn't understand why nobody's responding to him. So they can't hear him or they can't see him. But he did not kill himself is what he's saying. So at this point I was asking, you know, so basically who killed you, you know, and who or who hired who was hired to kill you and he said he showed me a woman standing behind him and he said there was a man standing behind the woman and this woman was protecting her empire and this woman had the face of a devil and as he was um he says that she has a hunger for power and that then there was a fire burning in her belly and there's anger and fury over this situation um, because it's dragged her involved or gotten her closer to the fire, so to speak. And this woman, he said, would stop at nothing uh, to get what she wants. And he said that, um, basically he said that she snuffed him out and she would snuff out any bird in a cage that's being forced to sing. Those were his words. In other words, as I interpret that, he's being, if he was forced to talk based on some deal that they were trying to arrange, then basically he was a dead man because she would have his, um, had him knocked off. Basically, then he showed me this picture of this woman who's responsible was writing a letter of condolence or a card to Jelaine, the, the, his longtime partner, and perhaps co-conspirator, however you look at this. But basically what he's saying is that this woman stole his thunder. He's, and then he shows me a picture of him arm wrestling this woman um, who they were really in this, it looks like she had the last play here. And he says that she wears two faces and that what she always gets what she wants. 
And, and he's showing me that she rules with an iron fist. And this fist is filled with rage and dominance. And basically over this checkmate. And he's showing me these black and white squares from a checkerboard. And he said that things are not black and white. They are not clear cut here. They're playing a game of power and control. So in the outside world, he might have been the king. He shows that he was the king on the on the chessboard that they were playing. But the most important person, as I understand, on the game in the game of chess and on the board here is not in particular with the scandal or the case, but this queen is the most powerful. And I believe um, it was um, it was a game here between this king and this queen. And he said that he sees her um, he, and what he's basically saying is that there's rats in these tunnels that are scattering in every which direction in the underground. Um, they're scattering because someone is shining the light in onto, these onto the tunnel. There are so many rats and they're falling and they're scrambling to try to get over each other, trying to get an escape. So um, now I'd like to share with you um, from my um, soul wisdom cards. I just pulled three cards, one for each question. And the very first card um, I pulled was this card here. Um, is he dead or alive? So the first thing I'm drawn to is Jesus sitting on the top of a mountain here with the halo. And being that he's on the top of the mountain, this is just telling me right away that he's dead. And basically there's this sinking um, SUV here that's empty. There's no person in it. Again, the vehicle is empty and sinking into the blackness. To me, this vehicle represents the physical body and being returned to its natural state. He is out of the body. Um, the energy of the body sinking into the ground. The cougar laying on its back, well, maybe being exposed, maybe being vulnerable in this vulnerable position, definitely upside down, up the creek. And you know, laying on the edge of a mountain, exposed. And this beautiful, glamorous woman, you know, the first thing that I'm drawn to is her neck and the jewels. You know, um, she's very glamorous and she's very pretty. She's young. And now I'm really thinking, you know, the neck, um, the, the, the method or the reason on how he died. And maybe he was beginning to stick his neck out in a way that he hadn't, that caused for his demise. And he's telling me here that there is a female involved and I don't think it's the person that we first suspect. Now card number two, now this is pretty interesting. Was it a murder or a suicide? And you know, this card shows this Madonna holding this child, a naked child. Well, there is basically telling me that, you know, the female support is, um, is basically telling me the female support that he had, um, that he was not suicidal, and that he had the support from loyal female persons. Um, and or this rose that I'm looking at here, you know, there's a dark center here. And this is a sort of, this is sort of telling me that there was darkness involved of being exposed and perhaps the reason for the murder and that it was being caught. He was caught in a very vulnerable position. He was um, unprotected in terms of the death being circumstantial, fishy. Look at the fish there. And with all the cracks in the painting be in the background, you know, that's telling me that this death was not all of what it appears or being reported and that you know, that shellac that covers a painting that causes it to crack. You know, I think there's some things being covered up and, and, and you can't see it. And so that there's many, many layers here that are not being revealed. Um, but that small boy, that small boy child is revealing his sexuality and that's being exposed. And that represents Jeffrey Epstein and the foundation of this whole scandal perhaps his sexuality being exposed in a bigger way um, and just the whole thing uh, completely um, being exposed. Now the third card, card number three, is who is behind this murder? Um, and you know, what's really fascinating to me, the first thing that I catch my eye on and what I'm drawn to is the, the 
hidden figure with his hand out you know he's on the edge of the card you he's you see him standing in the shadows you can't see in a real def definition of who he is so there's someone else's hand that's involved in this death and of course the central vision uh, person in the, here in this card is a woman and then what do we see is a man in the background I don't know is she supporting him he's got his arm around her with the appearance of support perhaps that's the whole reason why um, she's so involved in protecting this man or protecting their empire and then there's these twists in this golden rope you know that's connecting them what to a big apple so who would it be in New York City or from that state then there you see the stopwatch imagine that Jeffrey Epstein time has stopped he is in the world of spirit and as I said earlier he keeps looking at his time so is it that the time has come for this exposure to be shown or revealed? Then you see this white hat here with a white feather in it. And you know, that makes me feel hopeful that the truth will be revealed, that there is someone that is going to help us see the truth and for the right, um, you know, justice to come to either victims or any of those pe persons involved or wrongly accused. So, wow, that's my message for um, these three questions. You know, um, the angels and guides are always here helping us to open and support us in ways to showing, shining the light. Um, and I hope that they show and shine the light on this investigation as more information comes to play. Um, so that's pretty much it um, for my channeled message here from Jeffrey Epstein. Um, whether he's dead or alive, murdered or suicide, and who's behind it. So go ahead and please leave your comments below. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on my spirit message and or messages in from the cards. And if you have a loved one that you would like to connect with in spirit, I would love to connect with you also. You can connect with me, amira at amirahall.com and check out my website and the links are in the description below. So until next time, please tune in or subscribe for my monthly channel messages on the energy report. So thanks again so much. Please give this video a thumbs up if you resonate with it and subscribe. Many blessings to you.